Hey folks, welcome back once again. It's me, it's me, it's that Retro J-O to the single E, bringing you this edition of Raw, Power, and I emphasize Raw and Power because last night we had an episode of Power. Yes, that's right, we had the episode of Super Power, which was pre-recorded before the pandemic took place, and it was pretty much the setup for the Crockett Cup that got canceled, but they're going to run this show like they did last night, and they're going to run a new show called Carnyland until the show start again, and then we're going to get the Crockett Cup. So, that being said, this one's going to be a long one, so I'm going to, I'm going to get right through it so we can get all this in, all this information into our brains of all this wrestling action for Monday and Tuesday night. So, let's get right into it. Start with Raw. We start out this episode of Raw with the man, Becky Lynch, coming out holding the Money in the Bank briefcase. That's right. She had it in her hand, even though we know Asuka won the Money in the Bank match. She comes out. Everyone's kind of perplexed of what's going on. She sets it on this table in the middle of the ring. She starts talking a little bit, and we have this feeling that something's going on. And if you watch any moment in wrestling this whole year so far, we all know the deal with wrestling. We're not going to explain this. Everyone knows this. This has been known. But this was a non-scripted, real moment in WWE history. And I got the feels. I got the goosebumps on my arm. This is one of the most emotional, best moments I've seen this whole year on wrestling. And when I say it like that, it's because when I go to the movies, a movie can be so-so, it can be amazing, it can be whatever. But if you make me emotionally feel and become attached to that story or idea that you put before me, you've got a good rating for me. You've got the good rating. It's like if, if a movie can make you cry, then that is a piece of history worth watching, remembering, cherishing. But anyways, let's get into it. So Becky comes down, she has the briefcase. She starts talking a little bit. We don't know where, what's going on really. Then Asuka's music hits. She comes out. Sorry, this is, this is emotional, sorry. Okay, so anyways, Asuka comes out saying, hey, why you got my briefcase in you know, Japanese or whatever. But uh, yeah, then Becky starts to explain it and she starts saying, I know you couldn't get the briefcase open, but let me open it for you. And she opens the briefcase and the women's championships in there. And I'm just like, holy crap, what, what, what is this, what's going on here? Then she starts to explain that she didn't tell anybody that the stipulation for the Money in the Bank match was whoever won the briefcase won the Women's Championship. And Asuka's just like, she's just blown away. And then she's like, Becky's like, hey, you're the champion. And she's like, I'm champion, I'm champion. And she starts freaking out, super excited. And then Becky says, now I want you to go be a warrior and I'm gonna go be a mother. That's right, Becky Lynch is expecting and she's walking away from WWE for the moment. And you could just see the look on Asuka's face and she's just super excited for her, gives her a big hug and you know everybody backstage throughout the show is celebrating and it was it was such a good moment. It was one of the best moments I've seen on Raw since I started doing these reviews. It's not a setup, it's a real thing. Becky is pregnant. She is married to Seth Rollins. So, there you go. Congrats, guys. Now let's get into it, because we got a long show to go, and we can't take too much time on anything. we got to bust through these matches and get through these promos, because there's a lot, a lot, I mean a lot to cover today. Match one is a no-DQ match with Bobby Lashley versus Umberto Gorilla. You remember last week when Bobby Lashley, well, not last, yeah, I guess it was last week. It was before the Money in the Bank match, but Bobby Lashley got dq in that match to have a chance to be in the Money in the Bank match. So this is a rematch with him. It was a, uh, I don't know, it was a pretty good opener, pretty good match. There was a moment where Umberto slaps Bobby Lashley in the face, then you see it in Bobby's eyes, he starts to hulk up, and his face is just like full of anger, and he's like, I'm gonna kill you now! And he does, yes. He puts him in the full Nelson submission, and Umberto taps out. And that's the end of match one. 
Second, second thing happened. Promo, we have a promo of the Street Profits challenging the Viking Raiders to a basketball match. That's right. A basketball match on WWE, you say? Yes, a WWE basketball match. We'll get to it soon, but that was a promo of the challenge. Viking Raiders accept that. So, yeah, it's silly, but it happened. Then we have another short promo with Andrade, Austin Theory, and Angel Garza backstage with Selena Vega. And they are arguing. You could see the tensions mounting between the team. They're all trying to one-up each other. You've got the whole rooster syndrome where they're all puffing their chests out and they're saying, oh, I'm all the best. And you could just see th this whole group is starting to break down. So right after this, we have Akira match two, Akira Tozawa versus Angel Garza. So this is the this is the whole waltz happening. Angel Garza's in the ring doing his thing, beating up on poor Akira, and he's basically looking at Theory and just saying, "Look what I can do! Look what I can do! See, I can do this all night!" And that's what he does. It was a very short match, pretty much a squash match, and yeah, he won via the wing clipper. So. After this, Drew McIntyre's music hits, and he comes out, and he tries to put them all in their place, which he cert certainly, certainly does as WWE Champion. He hits Austin Theory and Angel Garza with a Claymore, basically telling them, hey, quit this. This is my show, and y'all need to be fighting out here and doing all this mess. And then we move on right after that into a match with Drew McIntyre versus Andrade. That's right, United States Champion versus WWE Champion in the ring. I thought this was actually a really good match. It, it really it really had Drew put over Andrade on the strengths because Drew usually just dominates anyone he faces in the ring. And it was quick. It wasn't quick, but it was, it, I don't know, it was a good back and forth. Drew making Andrade look good match. That's all it was. Very physical match, very big match, very strong, tough match. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Drew will take out Andrade with the Claymore. He gave him a trip to Claymore Country, as he's calling it now. He called it Country later in a promo. So after this, we have a promo with Drew offering a brand to brand invitation for Baron Corbin to come over from SmackDown to challenge him in a match. Not a match for the belt, just a match. So next week, we're gonna see Baron Corbin versus Drew McIntyre on Monday Night Raw. So two, two more promos after this. We have MVP backstage with Bobby Lashley, and he's basically playing these mind games with Bobby saying, hey man, when I first came here, you you were you, you were chasing that goal, and now it's been like oh, almost a decade, and it's, you're still, you're still in the same spot, man. So come to me, come to me, man, and I can, I can put you over. But that's pretty much all it was. After this, we have a promo in the middle of the ring. It was a moment of bliss with Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Basically just doing their little thing like they always do, talking about what's going on, offering their congratulations to Becky Lynch. For the little baby, put a little baby on the way, a little, a little baby Becky. Then we get the Iconics. Oh boy, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce come out to interrupt this whole celebration of birth. And I didn't like this at all. I do not like the Iconics. They are a, to me, they are a stale tag team and they don't have any chemistry. They're very generic, very cookie cutter, and I don't like them. This whole segment, not good. So after this, you know, when they came out, they're basically challenging for the tag team belts against Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. They pretty much say no, but they said they want their match anyway, so right after this, we go into match number four with the Iconics versus Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Honestly, it was a, to me, personally, it was very sloppy, there was no chemistry, just not a great match, not a great match. Billy Kay, unfortunately, and Peyton Royce, the Iconics take the win on this one. We have a promo with Ray. Mysterio congratulates Seth Rollins on the upcoming birth of his little baby Messiah. And then Seth just stands there and stares and walks away. And it was weird. And we'll get onto that shortly. There's a match coming up involving all this. It, it was very weird. He just, Seth looks catatonic during this. And it's just odd. Then we got like a 10 second promo with R-Truth 
with some <laughs> redneck bubba teeth in calling himself pretty Ricky with his eyes <laughs> crossed. I don't know. It's, that's all it was. It was weird. Then we find out why he did that. He's basically split himself personality in this next match with our truth being one wrestler and this pretty Ricky being another character. It's silly. I don't know. It's silly. I don't know if it's bad or good, honestly. It's just it's just very silly. It's this match five. We have our truth with Ricochet and Cedric Alexander versus Shane Thorne and Brandon Bank and MVP in a three on three tag team match. It was kind of, to me, it was a very chaotic match. Um, the only good thing about it was R Truth looked amazing in this. Whenever R Truth is very physically skilled in the ring and he's funny, also, he's just great. He just he gets overlooked a lot, and it's very sad that R Truth, such a guy with such charisma and such in ring ability, gets overlooked and basically put in the undercard or lower mid card a lot of times. It's very disturbing to me why, why they do this to him. I don't know. He's been wrestling for a really long time, but he's still got them skills in the ring, I have to say. Um, our truth and everyone, our truth Rick Shane Cedric Alexander took the win on this one. Not much to say about Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. It was mostly all our truth on this one. It was He was the centerpiece of this match. I almost forgot that Ricochet and Cedric were even in it, to be honest. So after this, Bobby Lashley comes out, Spears Truth, and then MVP helps him do the beatdown. So this was from earlier when they were talking about how MVP could push um, Bobby Lashley and make his career great. This, this all this was. They kind of like teamed up for a beatdown on Truth. So we got three promos after this. Jinder Mahal. Basically, short interview, says he's ready for his hero's journey to rise back to the top of WWE. And that's pretty much it. And then we cut to my favorite hated wrestler in the whole world, Shayna Baszler. And she's basically asked about the whole uh, Becky Lynch situation. And she says a whole bunch of crap. And she basically calls Becky Lynch's he said, what kind of champion you go gets pregnant? Blah, blah, blah. And then she says, basically, she called, she calls the baby a parasite. You know what? You know, Baszler, Baszler, you. All right? You don't, you suck in the ring. You suck at promos. And how dare you? How freaking dare you talk about someone's baby like that? I mean, who do you think you are? You are a piece of trash. You are not, man, just, that's it. Okay, I apologize for that. Um, there's some things you just don't say, and I, I went a little overboard there. I apologize, guys. Um, yeah, it happens. She just, she just really. I don't know. I don't like her. I don't think she's good, but let me just explain it this way. Back in the day, back in the old days of wrestling, there'd be these older women in the ring, or not in the ring, but they'd be in the audience, these older fans, like older grandmothers and stuff. They would actually sit there and throw stuff. They would hate wrestlers, so, I don't know. Baszler, you're making me hate you. And if that's what you're meaning to do, not on, if this is a scripted thing and you, want me to hate you, you're doing a very good job at it. We'll just say that much. But let's move on. I gotta I gotta clear my mind of that. Um Alright, moving on. So next we get a promo with uh, AJ watching The Last Ride, which is the Undertaker's show coming out talking about his his uh sorry I'm I'm just a little off kilter right now. Give me a minute I'll get right back into it. AJ watching the last ride with Undertaker, that's his show where he's shown how he became a legend and how he feels about 
find that perfect flash match. And that's all it was. AJ gets a little, little mad about it. There was a pop one on the TV. And you could see, you could see in his face, AJ's still got a little, uh, I don't say re regret, but like, just a feeling of he could have done better, but I don't know. He's got that PTSD from Taker going on. All right, next match, we have match six. Rey Mysterio and Alistair Black versus Murphy and Seth Rollins. This was from before I was talking about. This match was very odd. Seth was standing on the side of the ropes the whole time, and he was basically catatonic. And his partner Murphy was doing his darndest in the ring to get through Rey Mysterio and Alistair Black, but it just wasn't happening. Then all of a sudden, Rey Mysterio goes for 619 on Murphy. And Seth Rollins stops it. He grabs it from the outside, stops it right in front of the ref. Ref sees it, DQs them. Rey Mysterio and Alistair Black win the match right then. Seth Rollins loses his freaking mind. Loses his freaking mind. Starts beating up on Rey Mysterio outside the ring. Throws Alistair Black over the um, over the side there. And then the barrier. I was thinking, I was thinking barrier. He throws him over the barrier. And then he takes Rey Mysterio. And he presses his eye into the steel steps and you have the mechs come out and you have a moment where Rey Mysterio's mask is partially off and then we see in the minute after this, after they're backstage, you can actually see a bit of his face. If you've never seen Rey Mysterio's face, you don't see it fully, but you'll see most of it. It was it was crazy. Honestly, it was, it was very crazy. After this, they go in the back, a fight breaks out, Seth apologizes. He doesn't really mean it, but he kind of just fake apologizes and then another fight breaks out between them. Alistair Black and <laughs> it was just Alistair Black just starts trying to beat down everybody and that that's pretty much it. It was it was crazy watching. It. it was it was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool match. Pretty cool match, I have to say. Alright, we got how many we got left? Yeah. Bunch of promos, one more match. Alright, let's get through this because we gotta get to power. After this is we have the Raiders versus the Street Profits B ball game. And we see the Street Profits basically whoop the crap out of the Viking Raiders. And it was funny. It was fun and silly. That's all it was. You know, it was a nice little break, a little comedy moment for everyone. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. After the after the Viking Raiders get squashed in this, basically they say we let you in, and it shows another cutaway to them hitting like all these ma masterful three shots and just crazy and everything. And he even has a moment where he hits a dunk. Silliness. After this, yeah, so we got Natalia talking to Baszler. Basically, she's gonna teach her some freaking respect for talking that trash earlier. I was wanting this to, to end the way that I wanted it to, but you know, obviously when you're a fan, you always want one thing and you get the other in WWE. That's what it always seems like. And basically, there was a match right after Baszler versus Natalia, and I wanted Natalia to whip the hover loving crap out of her. Gotta watch my cursing. I cursed earlier, and you know, I didn't mean to, but it happened sometimes. Fortunately, no, it was a fine match. It was, it was all right. Very short. Baszler takes the win, obviously, with a knee strike. And I'm like, really? Really, yeah. So last two things, we have two promos left in the show. It's just that first one was just an interview with King Corbin with Charlie, and she asked him about what happened at Money in the Bank. Basically, he's just like, whatever. He about, he's just talking about how he threw Ray Steer and Alistair Black off the building, which we all know that they just went over onto a mat. You know, if you look behind the scenes, it's on, on, on the show, they will say they fell onto a secondary roof. In reality, it was a secondary roof. I'm not going to say what it is. But y'all know, y'all know the deal. But it was, they landed safely on a secondary route. That's why they were on this show. Finally, last moment of the night, the Edge and Orton promo. This, it was as good as, a, good as they always are because Edge and Randy always have good things. I was hoping this whole thing was over with, but unfortunately, it's dragging on a bit more. I wanted Edge to go on to do something else. This is, this is my fantasy thing. This is what I wanted to happen. I wanted Orton to come out, interrupt, Edge stand there looking at him, 
Then I wanted Orton to describe this whole situation with him, you know, him and Edge as a test, a very weird mind test to see if Edge still had it after all these years and he wanted to team up to be rated RKO. But that's not what happens because like I said before, as a fan, you ask for one thing, but you get another usually. So that's pretty much what happened. They were just talking and then Orton challenges Rain, Orton. <laughs> Horton up challenge, Randy challenge and stuff. Anyways, there's a lot to talk about. Baylor got my mind messed up. Randy Orton challenges Edge to a straight up normal wrestling match at Backlash. That's all it was. Just a normal one, no, not, not a special, no DQ, hardcore, nothing. Just a regular old match because he says that Edge doesn't have what it takes to fight in a normal match. So, I don't know. Dude fought on top of a trailer. And tied, and, you know, destroyed up a whole back back area of WWE. I'm sure he could take you in a match. I don't know. That's all it was. Edge did not reply, and the show ended that time. Now let's move on to NWA Power. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna sh shovel this in as quick as I can because this is already a long episode. So last night we had an episode of NWA Power. They call it NWA Superpower. It's episode 21, and it premiered last night. And it was great because we haven't had NWA power in a long time since the pandemic. This is basically a pre-taped show from before. This was supposed to be the end, the end episode before the Crockett Cup, which got canceled because of the pandemic. Now they're showing this episode, and they're going to do a new, some new series starting next Tuesday until they restart shows again, and then the Crockett Cup is going to come a little bit later. So let's move right on to it. So before I before I start though, I will say. Throughout this thing, they show little previous clips from the old episodes to, sh to bring, basically bring you up to snuff on what has happened to get to these moments. Because, like my memory, most people's, you know, if it didn't happen last week, I don't remember it. And this was months ago. So they had, they basically brought you up to speed. Match one, we have Camille versus Matty Max. No, I don't know who this girl is. Matty Max, she must be a new one. But anyways, it was a great opener debut of Camille. Camille is excellent in the ring, I have to say. It was basically a squash match with Maddie Max. Camille is, she's got the moves, she's got the talent. Don't know about the voice because they won't really let her speak. She did speak on a promo a little bit later, but uh, which is actually next. But yeah, it was a great opener, but it was a squash match. But it just showcased the skills. This was her in-ring de debut at NWA. Camille will take the win. After this, we have the Camille promo I was telling you about. It's Camille talking about how when she was being the best at everything at a young age and how everyone hated her because she was good, good at softball and everything else and football and everything. But that's pretty much it. It was okay. It was okay promo. Match two, we have the Rock and Roll Express versus the Question Mark and Aaron Stevens. If y'all know who Aaron Stevens, Stevens is, he used to be the stunt double on WWE of The Miz. That's right. He was Damian Mizdow. So, yeah, look it up. He used the same music as The Miz. He was his stunt double. But that's Aaron Stevens, same guy. This match, Rock and Roll Express will take the win. It was a slow-paced match, but it was decent, I guess. I mean, it wasn't horrible. I give it about a C. And it was uh, Trevor Murdoch came out at one point. And then Aaron Stevens brings out Question Mark Jr. to handle Trevor Murdoch, you know, walking around the ring trying to cause problems. It was, I don't know, that part was dumb. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Next we have a promo with Thunder Rosa, Allison K, and Lena discussing that they should have a triple threat match for that women's championship in NWA Power. And that's all it was. They didn't really say if they agreed on it or not. They just discussed it. <coughs> match three, we have Jax Dane versus Tim Storm. This match reminded me of the Moxley match with Jack Hagar. It was all around the ring. But actually, it was better because there were people there. Yes, this was not an empty ring, but this was a full ring because it was pre-taped before the pandemic, which I like. But yeah, it was good. It was a, it was a beat-em-up brawler. It was kind of slow, but it was super physical. And if Tim Storm won this match, he gets five minutes of the ring with Danny Deals. Danny Deals is the guy that was dressing up like Tim Storm's mama 
and basically making fun of his mom. So you don't make fun of a wrestler's mama. You don't do that in wrestling. Sorry to say, don't do that. And he did win the match. And he got five minutes with Danny Deals. And he whipped the crap out of him. Well, I say that. He just put his finisher on twice. But it's a good finisher. It's a good finisher. Roughed him up pretty good. Match four, we have a triple th threat match with Marty Bell versus Tasha Steeles and Ashley Box. Nothing really special to say. This was almost like a throwaway match. To me, it was kind of forgettable. This, the women's division in NWA is actually really good, but this one seemed very generic. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what the deal was with this one. The story wasn't really built up for this. It just randomly dropped in there, and it was, eh. <coughs> it was, I don't know. It wasn't that. It was a C minus. It was kind of slow, kind of sloppy. Tosh Steels will take the win though in this no story match. After this promo of the night, promo of the night, we have an excellent, excellent Eli Drake. Eli Drake. That's right. That man is back. Yeah, yeah. That's what he says. Yeah, I love that. I love it. An excellent James Storm and Eli Drake promo. Basically, Eli Drake called out every promotion, every promotion, Ring of Honor, everybody, <coughs> for the Crockett Cup. Everybody. He didn't drop Ring of Honor by name. Didn't drop it the other ones, but he, he called them all out to take them on because they're tag team champions. He wants anyone. He said, anyone, any dimension, any time, anywhere, anyone. Yeah, 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 that's exactly. It was it was great. I loved it. So final match of the night. This is the finale for NWA Superpower, the show that we've been waiting for for a long time, and it was finally here. With Villain Enterprises versus Strictly Business. If you don't know who these people are, Villain Enterprises consists of Marty Skrull and Brody King. And strictly business is Nick Aldis and Tom Latimer. That's right, the 10 pounds of gold champion right there. Nick Aldis was in this. It was a great match, a great finishing match. There was a lot of cheating, dirtiness in it. It was a lot of physicality, a lot of big, big, big moves. Brody King actually hit the best pile driver I've ever seen in wrestling. Now, if you see something you've never seen before wrestling, it makes the dull moments seem great, seem not so dull because, like, if a show's not that great and then you see something you've never seen before, it's good. I've seen a pile driver before, but this was like the best pile driver I've ever seen. It was the cleanest, nicest, most hard hitting pile driver I've ever seen. And I think it looks so good because this dude's, dude's huge. So, yeah. And then Nick Aldis even hits a macho manish, very clean elbow drop from the turnbuckle. It was great. Great finish the night. Strictly Business will take the victory at the end of this night. And after this, we have a final thing. It was a short promo from Billy Corgan. If y'all know who he is, he's the owner of NWA. He is, he was in the Smashing Pumpkins. You know, I know you all know who they are. And he announced that next week, until the show start again, there will be a Tuesday show every week, but it's going to be called Carnyland. Not sure what it's going to be. No one seems to know what's going on with it, but the name you know, Carnyland Carnivals and stuff. I don't know. Sounds weird. I have no idea what it is. But it's coming next week in the same slot as Power until Power comes back. So that should last three or four weeks, and then we should be back to live shows again. That's pretty much it. It was a decent Power. I enjoyed it. A couple of matches not so great. But, uh, hey, sometimes you get what you get. But we got Power back, and that's great. That's all for tonight. Sorry it was so long. We had a double show today. So, I had to cover them both because I got I got more episodes coming out shortly. Today, there will be a lot of episodes, I think, coming out. I'm going to do a couple other things today. So, I'll catch you guys next time in the next episode. Remember to keep it retro.